Welcome to Community Voices with Carly Lissa Thorne. And I'm really happy today because today is Earth Day and I have a beautiful person who's all about Earth Day. I have with me Adam C. Hall and he's written the book The Earth Keeper. So welcome Adam. Well hello and happy, happy Earth Day to everyone. It's great to be here with you. I'm very happy to have you back once again. So today we're going to be talking about Earth Day. We're also going to be talking about your book, The Earth Keeper, and you're going to be talking about what we call undeveloping the future. So I'd love for you to share, because we, we've talked before, but other people don't know what we've talked about unless they've listened to the previous podcast and watched the video. So can you share with us a little bit about the background of your inspiration behind writing the book and what was your inspiration behind the title and how you've gotten from where you were to where you are today? Well, uh, happy happy to do that, and um, I was I was living what I would say was the American dream, and uh, I had set out uh, early on in my life to kind of achieve that quintessential picture perfect life of the the big house, and uh, I married my junior high and high school sweetheart, and. We we have three amazing, gorgeous daughters. I'm even a grandfather now. It's hard to believe, but I am. But uh, and uh, you know the successful business, the you know the country club, and you know just all the accoutrements of that I was that I'd set out to achieve. And um, but when I achieved them, uh, Carly, it it there was something dearly missing in my life. Um, and uh, so I set out on a quest, as I refer to it as, to, to discover what is it that's missing, what, to, to search for some of the life's, uh, you know, some of the life, you know, to ask myself some of life's most important questions, you know, who am I and why am I here and what can I do to serve? So the, the book that I put forth uh, just last year, The Earth Keeper, it's it's a memoir that shares this journey, and it shares the journey that I, from Adam kind of 1.0 to Adam 2.0, the predatory capitalist, hard driving type A, to really ultimately coming to my greater truth of who I am to find peace and happiness and love in my life, and um, so that should give you a little bit of an idea of what. What, what I'm up to and where I've been, but uh, happy to share a lot more with, with all of you today. So why don't you actually share with the audience, what does undeveloping the future mean? Well, in the undeveloping the future is um, came out of the, the book. Uh, it came out of my experience um, out in the world to find some of these answers. And what I recognized was that well the my upbringing in the, the church and all the therapy <laughs> that I went through and uh, the reading the both Eastern and Western modalities and just that search for greater truth and greater meaning in life what I found was a lot of great wisdom and a lot of great teachings and a lot of great practices but something was still missing and what I found was missing was this greater experience of my own transformation, of my own unfolding. So what I set out to do was to have an experience in life, to get out into the world, into nature, get out of my comfort zone. And when I did that, when I kind of went into that unknown, as some refer to it as, I began to un develop my old stories, the woundings and the pain and the suffering and the traumas that I had that I had not only in this lifetime but perhaps others if you believe in that, but to undevelop that. And in other words, instead of trying to add on to my life experience, I realized that in order to go forward I had it to unwind and undevelopment and let go, let die away the old stuff, the old junk. If I was a car, my trunk was full of a lot of baggage and it was time to unload the baggage, if that makes sense. 
it makes a lot of sense, and I think a lot of people, in some ways, are afraid to go there. I think in order for us to go forward, we need to allow ourselves to let go. And in letting go, it's a very liberating experience. It's kind of funny. We're so attached and we're so afraid to let go. And the beauty in letting go is that we are actually freer and we feel so much better. And so if we were willing to actually let go, we, we just feel so much better. So it's an oxymoron in so many ways. We hold on to the pain and fear, yet we'd be so much out of pain if we would let go. So yeah. and I, actually, I actually love the terminology that you're using in the book. It's saying undeveloping the future. And it, and it is so true. I, lo I love the way you put that. And I, I think I love using different words. We're, we're so attached to using old words. Mm -hmm. And I think in creating, being creative and using new words, it's such a freeing experience. I love the fact that you do that. I love the fact that you use more creativity and, and I'm just, you know, I don't know. For me, everything's about playing and creativity. And I think in being creative, it's more playful, more fun to want to go forward. Well, no doubt about it, and it, it, it's life, you know, life on the, life out in the, uh, you know, life in the world is pretty challenging, I think we would all a, a, agree, and so why not find ourselves having some fun with some of the things that we're doing, and words are certainly one of them, they're often misunderstood, and, but when I freed myself from what I referred to as the box, where I was kind of living in a box, and to, to, kind of take that, or some say we're in a, the prison of our own lives and our own stories and our own pain, and to take down that prison, take remove that box, it is so freeing, and it's, it is a liberating experience, and, and that's really was the primary reason uh, that, I, that I put out the book in the first place, is to that if in my own little way I could support others in freeing themselves from their story or their past immediately, not like incrementally or not like, well, I'm going to work on it, but to do so in a quantum way and to do so in a way that um, what some say is to shed your skin all at once, like the snake sheds its skin. You know, if we pick at it, ouch, ow, ow, oh, oh, I don't want to do that. But if we decide that we intentionally can shed that skin in, in, in an immediate way, it can serve to just kind of launch our lives to help us fulfill our heart's truest desires. And... So the book really speaks to this, and it is interesting because, Harley, we always think about evolving, evolving our lives. And yes, we are evolving in time, uh, but let's also think about how we can take away those parts of us and those stories like we've been talking about so that we can evolve into our fullest and greatest potential. And that's really what undevelopment is all about. Yeah, interestingly enough, you said you know, shedding the skin and all these other things, and we talk about this. And I also want to get back to the box because we get into quantum physics or quantum. In reality, there is no box. The box is an illusion. Well, I I, I like that, and I think you know it's like the it's like. Many of the great sages and avatars have always said, and I believe it is true of what you said, that life is perfect. Uh, you know, and when it comes to the, when it really comes down to it, there's really nothing to forgive. But let's also think about those great avatars and those great wisdom keepers and earth keepers that have shared such wisdom with us over over the millennium, and that is they care deeply about our humanity and our earth and were found themselves in great service attending to those in need. So just because we know that, well, ostensibly it's perfect and there is nothing to forgive, we also know that we live in the world and that we're here to serve 
the best we can to share our gifts. And uh, so I, I too, it would like I'd like to say that, but I too know that we must serve as well, and that's what I'm here to do is to provide a greater service to to the planet in particular and humanity, which I believe, Harley, is greatly challenged. Uh, and certainly, we can talk about some of those things as we converse further today. I love talking to you because we go down Pandora's box in many ways. How far down the rabbit hole do you want to go? <laughs> so let's actually get into some of the things that you actually are here to share. And we are talking about Earth Day. I know you and I can get into some quantum physics and metaphysics. However, today is Earth Day, so I'm going to digress and go back to Earth Day because you and I can get down other subjects. So let's go back to Earth Day. So you actually are all about the Earth Keeper Alliance that you also have, which is the EarthKeeperAlliance.com. So let's share, uh, I'd love for you to actually share with the audience, what is the EarthKeeperAlliance.com? What do you guys do there? A little, little backdrop to the Earth Keeper Alliance. And, you know, when I came back from that, uh, I, what Campbell would refer to as the hero's journey, kind of came back from the wilderness uh, and the adventure of, you know, further discovering my life and why I'm here, I, I asked myself, well, I, I, I don't want to be hanging out in some ashram or in some teepee or somewhere. This is not a, some kind of woo-woo existence that I was seeking, um, that true harmony and bliss and joy in life was being fully in the world and serving serving in the world and so I had at the time had been in real estate the real estate development and investment business uh, still am but at the time I began to ask my question well, what am I going to do with myself going forward uh, I recognized that well the industry that I'm in real estate development and investment could use um, some new a new perspective um, and so for the last uh, few years, I've really been sharing a, a new paradigm around real estate. And if, for those that you know real estate to some degree, it, 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 the industry is defined by highest and best use. What is the highest and best use for this piece of land? So that, that old structure, the old model said, uh, that's still very much alive today, however, it said that the highest and best use for a piece of land is the maximum amount of development rights and entitlement rights that you can get. In other words, how much can you stack on a piece of property to maximize its value? Well, I say, well, there's another perspective here and that the and there's a new definition of highest and best use, and that is what is the proper amount of development that should occur on a piece of land that takes into consideration the conservation, the preservation, and the restoration of the land, in other words, supports the biodiversity of that land, yet still allows a limited number or a, a very uh, select number of development that could occur on a piece of property. So at the Earthkeeper Alliance we are uh, taking away development rights. We are undeveloping properties to keep a limited amount of development but at the same time create conservation and preservation and restoration of the flora and fauna habitats and creating more open space, more recreational space, more space for the for gardens and other activities and limiting the development. So we do that uh, in a way that is for profit. Uh, we practice what I refer to as the quadruple bottom line of people, planet, profits with purpose. In other words, if it doesn't meet the bottom line, then it's a project that we would not want to do. 
Yeah. So you're creating balance in the ecosystem. Well, I yes, the, it, we are also creating balance in a, in, a, in an economic model. So there, in the one of the wonderful things that's happening on the planet is there are new paradigms coming forth, new models that uh, are coming forth that are sustainable models that take into account. Uh, as I mentioned, the quadruple bottom line of people, planet, profit, and purpose. They're not mutually exclusive. They can all go together. And I'm really glad that you brought that up because a lot of people think, and, and one of the things I love about you is that you talk like I do. It doesn't have to be woo land in metaphysics, and you can be spiritual and abundant. And you can still do things that are equal balancing, um, nurturing Mother Earth, and again, having some profit because again, we still we still are on this on this planet. We are physical beings having the spiritual experience. We came to this planet for a reason. We are physical beings. We are on this planet, whether we like it or not. And the currency on this planet, as we are on this planet, uh, is is money. That's the currency we are in. Um, so as you said, you are still sustaining sustaining Mother Earth. You are still balancing things out, you are creating a way to, um, I, I understand your model is what I'm saying, and so, and you are still creating profit, yet you are still making sure that land is being sustained, and you're making sure that's balanced, so there's enough land, there's enough create like creativity, in other words, the way you're balancing it out, as you just laid it out, more eloquently than I just did. That you, and, and as you said, in there, I heard the word that there still is profit. And I, I just, I'm only emphasizing that because a lot of people think that you still cannot make, make a profit when you're doing something that is still something that's good for the planet. And so a lot of people think that automatically they need to do something that is serving the planet and they, they have to be poor in the process of doing that. Does that make sense? Well, sure. It, sh it sure does. And we can be green in both senses of the word. And uh, so the idea really here, and I believe what we'll see more going forward as it relates to the planet, but also it relates to our economic systems, and, and is really one that is a balance uh, of, those t of those two. And I often refer to it as earthonomics, not economics. So earthonomics, really, it, it, what that does, it takes into a, account traditional demand and supply chains where we demand consumers have certain demands and then producers produce the supply. It takes into account that that model is still fundamentally sound. However, that model is it been conducted and it's been implemented in a way that was at the exclusion of the planet, of what the what is important for the planet. And we're seeing, and people for that matter, and now we are really seeing the cumulative effects of, of, of what is happening, not only just with the population explosion, but really what's happened just in nearly in 150 years of industrialization. So here it is, we live in a postmodern society, most modern time, and we are now have put ourselves in a place where we put face potential extinction on this planet. So earthonomics really speaks to okay, the old model, the old economic model must be revisited, and it should be revisited in a manner that creates a holistic system and so holistic models that balance that quadruple bottom line we're speaking about. So this is starting to happen, uh, and I'm very pleased that it is. Um, however, it needs takes everybody. It takes everybody to really show up to support these new systems and to implement what needs to be done along these new models within corporations, but it all begins within ourselves. It begins in our own homes. So that's where I, my focus is very much on our ecology, our relationship to the earth, as well as the environment, but 
the book, The Earth Keeper, focused very much on our ecology, our relationship to the Earth. So what are some simple tips and tools you can give the audience to start to get there? In other words, obviously, your brain is brilliant, and you, you speak like a professor. And you're also, you know what I'm saying? So for some people, it's going to be really hard to understand some of the concepts that you start to get into because it's very business-oriented. It's very ecology or economic-oriented. So what are some simpler, because, you know, we're speaking to a very, obviously, broad audience. So some people are going to understand some of the concepts, some people aren't. So what are some, um, let's start with some, we can go, like, through three levels of tips and tools. So what are some basic tips and tools that people can do to start thinking about how they can give back to balancing Mother Earth or tips and tools where they can start to see that they're conserving or, or giving back or, you know what I'm saying? What are some tips and tools you can give the audience to start well, thinking in a way yeah. of how they can start balancing? Absolutely. Let's, ex let's explore that for a, for a few moments because it's really important point that you bring up. So if, if, if we think in terms of this, on our left hand, we have the place of our being. And on the right hand, we have the place of our doing. Okay? They work together. They don't work at the exclusion of one another. So I want to talk a little bit about both what tips we can give for the being part and for the doing part. What are we doing out in the world to really help to create a sustainable life, lifestyle for ourselves and vitality? And what are we being? In, in the world to ensure that that's done in a way that is holistic and healthy and vital. So the being part is really what has been missing. Um, it's interesting, there was a article in the Wall Street Journal over the weekend, it was an interview with the famed biologist E.O. Wilson. And he's a very elderly man and he just published a new book called uh, windows into eternity and one of the quotes he said it in the world uh, in, the, in the in the interview was that humans do not know what they are doing in other words we are lost uh, we just go 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 do 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 and I agree with this and I, I believe that is what's leading to the the degradation of the environment and the destruction of humanity over time. Not yet, but over time. So we want to change that. So one of the things that I like to emphasize as a tip around the being part, because it's one thing to be doing, but it's another thing to be being. So let's talk about that for a few minutes. Because when we find ourselves in our state of presence, in other words, the first thing I would recommend to anyone is when we start our day, that we start our day in the being place, not the doing place. In other words, not straight to the computer, not straight to the texting or the newspaper, or you know, maybe you want to get yourself a cup of tea or coffee, I get it. But to take a moment before the kids get up, before your husband gets going, before whatever happens for you in the day, to find that 20 minutes to connect with the simplicity of who we are, which is just breathing, just si silencing our thoughts the best we can through meditation, and to sit with those thoughts and to feel our humanity. So first and foremost, to get into that being place. And we can do that very simply by taking time for ourselves. And then secondly, as it relates to the being aspect, is it's, it's, it, 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 the other key that I found that is very supportive is connecting with nature. Even when you're sitting in your chair or in your office or in your living room, during that morning period of time, it doesn't matter if it's snowing or whatever's happening outside, you can look out the window and feel the magnificence of nature. 
and to feel the magnificence of Earth, especially if there's birds or animals or other things, flowers in your space. And if you don't have that, you can certainly create that. So that being with nature is very grounding and helps us con con connect who, who we are. And then the last thing that I would really recommend around our being is to pick one phrase out uh, that maybe serves you and maybe it's a mantra to just to feel in your day to remind yourself as things get chaotic or it gets a little wild out there in the world to remember that you know and it could be as simple as I am love and I am loved uh, it whatever works and suits you so to have that place that always connects you to your being. So those are a few things about the being place. And I mention that as crit being so critical, Kylie, because if we're not operating from that, then we're operating exclusively in the doing place. And what's happened in the doing place is it just leads to a, a, a life of action and reaction reacting to old stories, reacting to old painful things. So when we're grounded in the being place, we become very powerful and clear and intentional in our doing place. So as it relates to the doing place, then we can put ourselves into action, into manifestation from a greater truth and alignment with what our heart and our soul desires. Um, whereas if it was the reverse, we would not be able to do that. We would just be coming from places generally that are associated with fear or guilt or shame. So the, the doing place is important as well, but not at the expense of the being place. Three things that I am doing right now as it relates to sustainability in the earth is there's kind of three little wild tips I have for the day and one is is has to do with taking a shower and take a shower with somebody you love if that's possible because then you're cutting back on all the water uses and you're doubling your pleasure <laughs> that's feasible do it <laughs> So the other things that are really simple are really around, you know, is to become package neutral. Package neutral. In other words, I unwrap some food that I eat in some package. Well, now when I go out into my day, I'll pick up a piece of trash or a piece of packaging that's out in there, out in the world, and re put it in the recycle bin. So you can, you know, if you have a, a candy bar, which I don't recommend, but if you do, you can pick up some wrappers. So that is really a, a, a cool thing to do it, it, as well. So there's some great little tips like that, little things that we can do that are make a big difference on this planet. And For example, another tip that I would recommend is to 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 cut to not recycle. In other words, it's not about recycling. It's about not consuming to where you are recycling. So don't create more recycling. Recycling's good, but don't create recycling. Don't even create the need to recycle. It's like you can compost. It's very easy to do and simple to do, even if you live in an apartment. So there's a lot of great things to to do on the doing side as it relates to Earth Day and sustainability, yet it's important that we hold the being aspect of who we are. And I hope that made some sense and hope it was helpful. You brought up a lot of valuable tips. Um, one thing I've just gotten a really habit of doing is um, when I've gone for walks, I carry a bag because for me, I can't walk. If I see trash on the ground, it's really hard for me not to bend over and pick it up. So yeah. I've gotten a habit of always carrying, uh, you know, tissues in my, you know, because I obviously don't want to pick up trash off the ground with your bare hands. So I've gotten the habit of keeping, you know, tissues in my, in my pocket, and I will bend over and pick up trash if I see it. 
But if I'm going for a walk around my neighborhood, I, I usually will keep in, in my pocket a, um, a plastic bag. Another one is when I go grocery shopping, um, I usually do tend to like to take the bags home with me because I use them as trash liners. Instead of going per in purchasing you know, trash bags for your liners in your home, I will use the grocery bags um, plus, and I use them as trash liners. So there are a lot of things that you can do to reuse things that are already out there. And obviously, a lot of I also have um, liners that uh, you know the ones that you the 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 wonderful uh, bags that you can already buy that are made from recycled materials to, to yeah. grocery your bags. I use those as well. But I also like taking home some of the recyclable plastic bags to use as trash liners. So there's lots of things you can do. But for me to walk by trash I see on the ground, it's really, I just can't not, not pick it up. So, I mean, there are things that we can do if we choose to do them. I don't see how people can walk by trash and just see it there and not do something about it. I don't, I don't know how. But anyways, and, you know, again, the recycling thing. I think it is important to do if you do have stuff in your home to recycle it. And like you said, composting, if you're a gardener, I mean, that's a great tool. And there's so many things we can do. We just have to choose to open our eyes. We have to choose to participate. So those are all valuable tools. And the really great aspect of what he said about our being and doing, if we do start our day with doing, we are starting our day being disconnected. And that's not a great way to start our day. And, it, you know, if you're not into meditating, there's so many aspects that are parts of meditation that aren't truly meditation. If your thing is not sitting in, you know, the true meditational style of sitting, if that's uncomfortable, uncomfortable, uncomfortable for you, if you have joint issues, whatever, you can sit in a chair. There's japa meditation, which means you can take a walk and say a certain phrase to yourself over. There's so, in other words, do some, do your homework. Go Google meditation. There's not one way to meditate. There's no. so yeah. many ways. For me, because of, of the surgeries I've had and my joint issues, I like movement meditation. So I actually love to go for walks and listen um, to uh, music, which takes me inwards. Or I do japa, which is, um, I will say, a mantra to myself. And again, there's so many different mantras that may you may, like you said, you pick something that means something to you. Or for me, I may do a laying down meditation. So mm -hmm. meditation is different to everyone. And there's not one meditation that's meant for everybody. There's so many forms of meditation. But mm -hmm. it is very really important, like I said, not to start your day going to doing. Because you will start your day completely disconnected. So thank you for those. Those are really valuable, valuable things to start with. And again, can you please let everyone know who you are? And this is a podcast, so where can they find you? And um, of course, you can just Google Adam C. Paul. However, please let everyone know, since they are also listening, where they can find you and who you are. Well, thank you for mentioning that. And yes, please, please feel reach out and say hello, or check us out, or what we're up to. You can find um, our land conservation website at EarthkeeperAlliance.com earthkeeperalliance.com and if you want to get involved uh, with us um, drop us a note at earthkeepermovement.org we have been gathering earthkeepers uh, for the last couple years from all around the globe of uh, 14,000 and counting now uh, just recently and so you can join us there and of course we're you know on Facebook and Twitter and those kind of normal social media places, but the key is to stay connected to one another, to, to find ways to collaborate. I mean, I if we think about the earth and mother nature, no greater collaborator than mother nature. I mean, certainly working together uh, to create all kinds of exciting things on this planet and obviously magnificence, beauty, thunder, and lightning in it all, but really to provide abundance. And, we too are part of that, and when we connect that way, um, that's what when when magical and miracles happen. So you can can connect with us there at EarthkeeperMovement.org or uh, with me at the EarthkeeperAlliance.com. Either of those are great spots, and I do want to announce today that we are have launched officially uh, our charity called Urban Gardens Community 
www.urbangardenscommunity.org, urbangardenscommunity.org. That site will be up and running actually tomorrow, and we are dedicated to educating and mentoring children, inner city children, in gardens to connect connect them back to the gardens. And this is a big thing that's happen, happening uh, across the globe, Carly, is that we uh, are seeing nature deficit disorder, NDD. So the idea for all of us, not just our children, but they are our future after all, is to connect with nature. So we're doing that at urbangardenscommunity.org. I'm so just really thankful that you joined us today. It, and I'm really blessed that today is Earth Day. And... Um, so thank you so much for joining me once again. I know you have someplace else to be, and so I'm going to make this one shorter than our normal long interviews that you and I have, because I know you and I can talk forever. And I look forward to having you once again. But I did want to have a special podcast today on Earth Day. As usual, everyone, I will put together a full blog post with all this information. I'll also be embedding the video. But today, just for today, I'm going to be putting up this special podcast, and I will be putting up the video at the following day. So I'll put together everything for you, and you'll have all his information. I will be putting links to his new site for the, the new charity that he was just talking about. I also be embedding the other links for everything he was just talking about. So you'll have his earthkeeperalliance.com, and the um, what was the other two sites? I know you, can you mention the other two sites one more time? Well, there's the EarthkeeperAlliance.com, and there's the EarthkeeperMovement.org. And so those are the two sites where you can just put your name in, and we'll stay connected with you or drop me a note there. Either way, uh, look forward to seeing you out on the Earth and enjoying the magnificence of our planet that we, we all share. And so blessings and love to, to all of you. I'll make sure to have all those links in the blog post. Thank you so much for joining me once again, Adam. And I look forward to every, seeing everyone next week. You've been with your host, Carly Lissa Thorne, and you can find me at carlyllissathorne.com. Have a beautiful Earth Day, everyone. And I look forward to seeing everyone next week. Have a great day, everyone. Take care.